Welcome to the Joe Abbas Show. What a joy to have you here today. Now, this is your life coach and mentor on air, online. From wherever you're watching us today, from wherever you're joining us, we do appreciate your company. Coming up in the show today, we'll continue our Define Gravity series as we talk to young people who are trekking on their way to success. And today we talk to Solomon Santigi Bangora about his incredible journey from selling pure water in the streets of Freetown to being an author, a poet, a youth activist, a student politician, a public speaker, and a recipient of multiple awards, including the Kofi Annan Ambassador of Peace 2019. Is a, is a published published writer and activist. This is the Joe Abbas Show. Are we happy to be here tonight? Couple allow old and young to make deposit and withdraw cash from their account at any time and anywhere. With Rokel Commercial Bank SIM Couple, you can send and receive money at any place and any time. Rokel Commercial Bank don't make life better for we all. This is your show. This is the Joe Abbas show. Now, we, we, we continue our Defining Gravity series. And in this series, we talk to young people trekking. That's the story of our guest today, Sam Solomon Santigi Bangora. He's here to talk to, to with us about his journey from selling pure water in the streets of Freetown to become an author, a poet, a child and youth activist, a student politician, an acclaimed public speaker, and a recipient of multiple awards, including the Kofi Annan Ambassador of Peace, 2019 awards that's international and good deeds day foundation best upcoming author and wait for it he's also um you know a published a published best author a published yeah. author now welcome to the show thank you very much now it's been um i know we started talking a couple of weeks back exactly and um <clears throat> you know somebody uh, we were looking at the stuff that's on the um facebook and somebody said motivation doesn't work Wow. And, and says, if they say motivation doesn't work, what, what, what's your response to that? Well, motivation works a lot, a lot because I'm a perfect example to that. And I can say it has helped me a lot from a very poor background, you know, in a very poor village to the city where I am today. It's because people motivated me. Two words, that is why. Two I'm words. Where so let's, I am let's today. come back to this. Now, tell me, tell me, we're, we're now looking at a photo here. Uh, tell, yeah. tell us about this photo. What is this? Well, where, where is this? Um, that is a photo at Tower Hill in a slum area where I grew up, in a place called Bakayad, a ghetto place where uh, poor people live. Did you live. know? How, how, who, who took this photo? Who took this photo? Um, it was a friend. Uh, his name is Lakish. You know, some couple of months ago, he sent me the photo, and then I decided to, you know, make use of it and then keep it. But I've never thought of publishing it now till when. Did we have what? 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 What did he use to take that photo? Well, he was having a very small phone that he was having. I think. I don't know if it's Sony Ericsson, according to him. You know, he, he used to take the photo with that um, Sony Ericsson and then kept it somewhere because, according to him, he knew the man in me and I, he's going to show me someday. You, 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 you were very unkempt. You yeah. could see the trousers that you had on was, was actually torn on, 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 on two, two places. Is, exactly. that, is that really who you are? You know, you know, sometimes people can take photos to represent who you really were no but is that is that what you really were uh, well my yeah, exactly because my story is a na it's a national something that each and every person around that community knows about so it's not something make up or whatever because there are evidences and there are people who saw me grow in all this and it's it's amazing so let's let, let's run through and the village what's the village called again where you were? one wolo one village one wolo one what's that is it like, is that local exactly one wolo one that's the village you were born and it's in the northern part of of the country exactly and then um, bombali district exactly now um and it's who, who are your parents oh well, my parents your dad who was your dad oh well, my dad was a farmer he still lives where is it oh uh, he's still in the north 
a Is very remote place? village. Yeah, exactly. What about your mom? Well, my mother, she's still living there as well. And she comes to the city once in a while and then check on us and go back. There, there are a couple of stuff that I've been following in your story. Yeah. Um, how many kids that you were born together in the village that are still there? Or how many of you made it out that you're aware that made it out to Freetown and became something like you now become? No, not that much. I'm only, I only know of one person, that is Ezekiel Bombay Sise, who was opportune to become a graduate. And that's the only person I can see as a role model for now. Yeah. But tell us, first of all, what you wanted to be, what you wanted to become. Your first exactly. biggest goal, your well, first biggest dream. I wanted, wanted to become a truck driver because this, the, we, in those days, we saw truck you drivers. You, as, you had one in the city, one of them be Exactly. Because, uh, how was that? Well, the reason is that in the place where I grew up, in a very poor village, we rarely see a vehicle, you know, not so even talk about other stuff like phone or whatever. So we only have a vehicle that visits our village probably twice a month, that's a bus. So we were always seeing the bus drivers as old models because we've never seen a bus. And the second person as well who I was seeing as a old model was somebody who was referred to as the village clerk. You know, he stopped at standard three. That is something like class three now. He was half educated, but everybody believed in him because he was the person was everyone the, was- the most educated person. Exactly, he was the person everyone was running to in terms of writing like, letters writing to letter people in town and all the rest. So we are seeing him as a hero and certain people had wanted to become a village clerk as well, right? Some of us had wanted to become. And so the first thing that came into your mind, and, and then they thought he said he was a missionary. Yeah, exactly. People who you would aspire to, and, and who are these missionaries? You said they were. Well, the missionaries are white people from US and Britain as well who came there. What mission were they working for? Well, they were they were there to spread the gospel, but their main intention wasn't to to settle in our village. What happened was the first day when they first um, came to our village, everyone was running, you know, away from them. Imagine you've never seen a white man. Probably for the first time you saw them coming. So everyone was running, including other children. I was a bit scared, but not compared to how others were running, you know, in their hearts. So I decided to stand and then. Uh, for something like some minutes, and I decided to touch to one touch of their the garments. Guy, and it's like they were like, "This guy is too it's, tough. It's too Everyone tough. is running." So, no. and and you talked about you talked about um, obviously being in a classroom that was touched, and yeah. so rain when it rains, exactly. And the school takes a holiday, exactly. And um, <laughs> and then you talked about the fees that you, uh, that was paid most times it wasn't in cash yes tell us about that what did you what did your parents used to pay for your for your school fees well we use foul or probably local materials to compensate the, the chicken the, the beef chicken and yeah, exactly and palm oil. exactly yeah. these stuffs you know to compensate the so teachers they, so just in the give form the teacher. of yeah, exactly were they qualified the form teachers they would not they would not have been they were not teachers. qualified teachers the missionaries just made use of them you know certain people that they took for McKinney, or what other was the name headquarters. Of the was, it, was it a formal that, school? That was, no, it's, it's a formal school for now, but it wasn't a formal school then. It, it, by then. You know, for now it's named the WCSL Primary School, Wesleyan Church Sierra Leone Primary School. <laughs> WCSL Primary School. This is the Joe Abbas Show, and this is where we, we share stories of inspiration, stories of unrelenting young people define gravity, define all of those things that would stop them from becoming what they're supposed to be in life, but to rise up, <laughs> and rise up. As you have been inspired today, just be clocking in your mind, because what is telling you what you're going through is not unique. People have gone through what you're going through, and you have to be ready to fight back. This is what we're sharing with you today. Don't go away. This is the Joe Abba Show. Stay with us. With Rokel Commercial Bank Copper Pass, a free, easy, and not the fastest way for make payment with just your phone. Scan the Rokel Commercial Bank Copper Pass QR code and make your payment instantly. You no need no internet na your phone. Rokel Commercial Bank, the bank of choice.
Welcome back. This is your show. It's the Joe Abba show. My guest today is um, is Solomon Santigi um, Bangura. <laughs> SSB. Now, Solomon, let's talk about when you came to Freetown for the first time. Yeah. What year was that? Well, that was in 2008. You left, um, mm -hmm. what was this name? Wawolo Wolo. Wawolo 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 Practice that. Practice exactly. that. Wawolo Wawolo. You left Wawolo. there to come to Freetown and it was 2008. Yeah. And you said when you came to Freetown, yeah. and um, what, what class were you at that point in time? Well, I was in class six. Class six. That's when. You, that's where we were. And you came. You attended the Saint Edward's Primary School. So, yes, exactly. And um, and you know there was this complications you have in school. Even to for your pronunciations, it was a struggle. Exactly. Of course, that was something you know that whenever I think of it, I just smile compared to now. Because years back, I pronounced words like enjoy as you enjoy milk as milk. <laughs> so it's like the class was. <laughs> and there was there was Mrs. Yeah. Fofana. Yeah, exactly. Who, who stood by you? Yeah. Where are those guys today? Well, some of them, you know, I see them in the streets and so my do, 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 do they really doff their hats to you and say, well, actually, so it's, it's just life? Well, I'm even having two of them whom we in the same class together in the university as well. You so they're, so they're there. So now <laughs> that's interesting. So and, um, and then obviously from the village, you yeah. started working on your English language. Yeah. It actually begin, began to show there, even in the village, yeah, that exactly. there is potential there, yeah. and you could you could you could actually speak good yeah. English. Let's talk about when you started to write. It was in class six, mm -hmm. and you said you were asked to write a story. Yeah, tell exactly. us about that. Well, it was there in press given time, and Mrs. Fofana asked each and every one of us to write at least ten sentence, you know, story, you know, that will be developed by them, you know, that will be used during the press given time. So, because we were about to act some play and all this, I wrote mine and others wrote theirs, and she took mine and laughed because mine was a conflict between the missionaries and the native people, how the native people behaved in all this. But she was laughing not because of the story, but because of the bad English that I used. But she understood <laughs> and then corrected You it. just looked at the English language. Exactly. Like English, and so she worked on it. Yeah, exactly. They and she told me to play. Exactly. She told me to act, you know, in the native form. And so what? you took the parts of exactly. the villagers yeah. who acted as a missionary. Well, it was a boy named so, Francis. So it was, a, it was your own story that they developed? Exactly. Now, after that, you began to write poems. Yeah, exactly. And you've written and published. So let's talk about the poems. What was the first poem you wrote at that point in time? Uh, the, the, the first poem was The Birth of a Destiny Child. That was my first poem. And I used it as well. I used the title. To, to become my first you know, chapter in Once a Village Boy. What's stopping, you, what's stopping you from getting annoyed or getting discouraged? Because people, a lot of the time, people do not like to be corrected. People well, are not teachable. Since a boy, I've always seen myself as a hero, despite the, the hurdles and all the punches. So how was that I don't so? get how was annoyed. That so? How was that so? Well, because after all, you know, the journey that I've been to, you know, these are city guys who've never you know, slept probably, they've never slept without having any food in their stomach. I've passed through that. So I always see myself as a hero. Whenever they laughed at me, I just say, it's their duty, let them do it. Because success without opposition is nothing. You won't be able. They are twin brothers. So since I'm yearning for success, I should be expecting opposition at the same they time. They say success and opposition are twin brothers. Do you agree with them? Oh. Do you agree with them? <laughs> you agree with them? Success and opposition are twin, twin brothers. brothers. What is it? What is it that stops you from looking down on yourself when you're going through those things? Because you look at people, you go to school, and they are better dressed. Yeah. They speak better. Exactly. But, but what is it that, that you said you, you've always been a hero? Yeah. And I was asking my guest last week, yeah. um, Kamuske, yeah. where, where do people like you come from? <laughs> well, uh, one, of the, one of the things that kept me going is motivations. I just, you know, I was just amazed when I heard an opposition, but they are twin brothers anyway. That's just side that action from the commenter. Because since a boy, sometimes when I'm having a less privileged time, especially Sundays, I visit the house of neighbors who are having better televisions and then looking at the Life by Design program. I've watched Kelvin Do's story. I've watched a lot of people, you know, you yourself coaching. So it's like, I always see it as an opportunity and say, wow, if such people, you know, pass through this and today he's at TED, He's at Harvard, you know, giving speeches to people who are PhD holders. What about me? We are in the same shoe, so I can do the same, or even more than him. So that kept me going. 
why would you have people like you thinking like that and another person saying motivation doesn't work like you had on this post well, that somebody posted well even two twin brothers or twin they sisters could be who are, yeah exactly even the same family exactly <laughs> same family <laughs> and yet they can't be different do you agree with that <laughs> yes, they can be agree. you can agree you can have people in your family you can have people one of the same family and you can just be different mm -hmm. and so the determination is there people have to decide the journey that they want to go so from class from class six to from five, five. you are still selling this and then um, and so and you you had a couple of couple of stuff there um you you wrote two books yeah exactly in the process one is called once a village, village boy. boy yeah and the other is um the virgin slum girl exactly now you were going to read for me um a page yeah um from once a village boy okay um take page one wow take okay. page one for me yeah okay Growing up as a boy in Africa, all I had was a dream which I always want to turn into a reality. I was born in a hut that poured whenever it rained. We had sleepless nights as the rain always pours on the bed where we slept, especially in mid-August, which is the rainy month here in my country, Sierra Leone. During cold time, we became children in the village who were chasing fire for warmth. Our native fathers wore own coats to prove to other men that they were men. Some of our elderly parents were hunters who took pride in hunting and killing animals, both large and small, that could be used for food preparation. My native mother sewed me clothes once in a while, and these clothes could only be worn when there was a very important occasion in our village or in the neighboring villages. In the place where I was born, although we were free from slavery, but we are not yet free from fear. We lived in terror of evil spirits and high national political tension as well. Our people used to burn palm oil, process oil from a palm fruit nut to moisture our malnourished skins. We did not realize the use of a precious body cream. We suffered and still suffer from many diseases. We are often attacked by wild animals or bitten by poisonous snakes. My dear mother became a victim of a snake bite when she was in the bush farming. Yet, we had no doctor except the witch doctor. He sold our elderly parents fetish or charms to drive out the evil spirit. Some were just small bags of feathers or bones. If the patient did not get better, our parents had to buy a bigger and more costly fetish from the native witch doctor. This might be the skull of someone who had been killed simply for this purpose. People who were mentally ill were referred to as people who have done wrong to the spirits that guided us. And if they were young babies who were born in such a condition, they were often bound and thrown into the river. Nobody, not even the witch doctors, knew what to do with them. Everyone was under the powers of these so-called doctors. When a mother gave birth to a baby, her face and the babies were painted white to scare away the evil spirit. Alcohol was the only comforter to my native booze men and boys. <laughs> now, so it's, it's, it's the boy from Wangwolo. One wow. 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 So there's a wa in the end. So we I'll still get it before we end the show. <laughs> okay. I know it's one wolo wa. I'll be able to get it. But 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 that's amazing story there. Now and then obviously. So where do people get these books? Do, do, is it out for sale? It's is available it at IPAM. At it's available IPAM Business Center. IPAM Business, business Center. Center. Do you have CLC? It's not a CLC. Well, it's just at the IPAM Business Center. Exactly. Now, whatever it happens, 030-600-600. Link up with us at, um, at LBD. We'll be able to connect you um, with that. Uh, we'll be able to connect you. Now, so let's, let's, move, let's, move, let's move quickly. Now, it's very interesting that you are not an art student. Exactly. How did you end up? You're, you're a commercial student. Yeah, yeah. Well, so even in, in IPAM, you're now present here at IPAM, yes. and you're reading accounting. applied accounting. Exactly. Double entry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're reading double entry. <laughs> yes. and, 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 debit and, and credit. Debit and credit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, and now, but, but let me ask you a question. So how, how you know, somebody who's, who writes books, yeah. you should be looking at an art student here. Why are you, why are you what, what happened that well, ended you in accounting? Life and a sense of reasoning are the greatest gifts God gave to man. If you want to achieve anything, use them well. You become the most powerful person on earth. I was born with this you know, sense of re reasoning and I'm alive, so I used whatever thing that I'm having in me to explore my world. We have a lot of writers out there who from the science world who are perfectly doing well. You know, the likes of Chinua Achebe. Mind you, Chinua Achebe was not an art student for start. He, he was a medical student who went to England to study medicine. And later on, you know, he was studying medicine from there. He converted as well. And he celebrated in Africa as one of the best writers, you know, whom I'm going to overtake. So, 
I hope so. I hope exactly. so. That's a, that's a big shoe to yeah, fill. Exactly. So I'm just saying some instances, you know, being an art student doesn't mean you become a powerful writer or neither me being a commercial student. It's something that you're born with. There's a difference between somebody who practices and somebody who is born with it. We can wake up and you give us a tax and say, perform it. Once we're born with it, we can perform it well. While the person who trains, you know, you have to give them time, something like one hour, two hour, and then they go through the process. So we're born with it. I can explode it at any time. You're born with it. Put your hands together. He's born with it and can explode it at any time. You've already published. You published three books? Yeah. So these two we have tonight, it's the Virgin Slum Girl and Once a Village Boy. But he said the first one was Pins of Africa. Yeah. The Pins of Africa, that was, you say it was an, a, a poem, a set of poems? Well, it, it was a set of poem, an anthology, and some stories as well, combined. And your mentors, Mensin Mandela, Barack Obama, Chinua, Achebe, and, um, and we have Elizabeth Brewer tonight. And Elizabeth has been contacting me um, for the last 100 years. <laughs> and she was the first person to send um, your photos. Elizabeth, put your hands together for Elizabeth. <laughs> And um, so Elizabeth has been supporting. You spoke about Brian Sitakagbo. Have you ever met Brian before? Yes, of course. Brian was, a, was an idol during our school days, you know, because he handles the stage well. And he taught us how to move when it comes to public speaking. You know, Brian you know. Sita. Put your hands together for Brian. Whether he's going to be watching this, but Brian is a... Now, there's a couple of stuff you shared with that things you believe in, and you said you should never blame your parents. Yeah. For what happened to you. Yeah, exactly. Why, why is that so? Well, every man, the destiny of every man is in your own hands, it's not in your parents' hands. You know, they are just guidance that should lead you to. But if they fail, you still have a responsibility to lead yourself. I want you to, to leave and close this session with that. How is that destiny in your hands? How does somebody who's watching and listening to you today can act tomorrow morning? In fact, from tonight, can begin to act and change and begin to do things differently that could just completely change the trajectory of their life. How would they do this? Well, first, first of all, I want to wave to all the young people out there. I want you guys wave, to know that to you guys to, to know that you guys are very much wonderful <laughs> and you're the best people in the whole world. One key thing is each and every one of you has to prepare for opportunity. Don't wait opportunity to prepare for you because if opportunity prepares for you, you're going nowhere. But if you prepare for opportunity. I think you'll be the, one of the best you know, people in the whole world. Secondly, people should stop being cosmopolitan. That is, you know, we have 70% of Sierra Leone population who are from the province, but immediately when they hear, you know, nobody cares again. There are people out there, there are young people out there who need role models. You've been an accountant, you've been uh, one of the best you know, lawyers or the best politicians from a very poor background. You have to go there again. Let these people know that. It can happen. Tell them I was it from here. I, I passed through it this. Can this can happen. Happen. Exactly. It can happen. Exactly. It can happen. One will over. It can happen. happen. Do you agree with him? It can happen. happen. Shout again. It can happen. It can happen. happen. Thank you very much. Put your hands together once more again for this young man. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Yeah. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. coming on the show. It can happen. That's the word. That's the message. People need inspiration. I can't tell you more people who inspired me to believe in myself when nobody believed in me. Even when I myself couldn't believe in myself, people had to help me believe in myself that brought me to where, to where you are. At. So don't, don't go away. Just stay. We have the final lap to do on this. A lot more in this segment tonight to inspire you, to prepare you, to round up this week, beginning, making sure this upcoming week becomes your most magnificent week. Stay with us. Transferring or sending money with Afri money is simple and fast. First, be sure to have money in your wallet. Dial star 161 hash, select option 1, then press option 1 to send to an official number. Enter the number, enter the amount you want to send, then enter your PIN after confirming the transfer details to the initiates. To send to a non official number, dial star 161 hash, select option 1, then press option 2, enter number. Enter the amount. Enter your PIN after confirming the details of transfer to initiates. Afri money. Namigeta. Af
free money. Now, as we wrap up tonight, I told you there's a, there's a guy, there's a young man here, um, Mohamed Aloko. Aloko Kamara. Mohamed Aloko Kamara. And the Aloko is a real name, right? No, it's actually a nickname. It's so. a nickname, Mohamed Kamara. But Mohamed Kamara, you're here today in the studio. You, you, you were, you were, we were on the show last week. You yes. showed me a, a couple of photos that you did of things that you designed for yourself. Yes, and um, when you had, you're here today, Prince Yes, let's, let's see. Sir. And you uh, say it's a surprise. I haven't yeah. seen it. I don't <laughs> really know what is there. And okay. um, so... I'm pleased to see you so on behalf of myself and Samuel. <laughs> so I don't know how close it came up. Put your hands together, boy. <laughs> how old are you? How old are you? I'm 20 years old, sir. And, and you're 20 years of age. And and what you did is pencil. Pencil, pencil yes, sir. yes, sir. Now, what would people who do this normally use to, to design this? Well, some use um, advanced pencils. Well, I'm using. Which you don't have. Currently. I don't have. Yes, I'm only using the two B and um, HB. And what I promised you was, I was going to connect you with uh, people who are already doing what you're doing now. Yes, sir. They're doing it for money, yes, and I wanted to be able to connect you to them. All right, I'm grateful, sir. I I I promise you. Yes, sir. And it's a promise I have. So, production team, put your hands together again for him. Thank you. Thank you very much. We want to wrap up the show tonight. What something has been shared that must have inspired you? You're in school, you're home, you've dropped out of school. There's something we share all the time about the power of belief. You can never become better than what you believe about yourself. There are some stuff that people shared over, the, over Facebook and some people say motivation doesn't work. Just ignore the motivational speakers. They're sugarcoating things. If that's what you believe, you know what's going to happen? You're going to wake up every day and, and wake up every day. And, 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 and Samuel, this, um, you know, Solomon said something very strong. He says, if, you know, uh, the inspiration you see before you, he saw a driver and he wanted to be a driver. So unless the motivation of people who've already succeeded, who've already achieved what you're trying to achieve, unless you have those pictures before you, wh where do you start? So please, keep working on yourself. It's possible. It's not sugarcoating things. Those are the things I heard that changed my life. And if you listen to it, it will change your life. And a lot of times, the things I say to myself is that I know my message is not for everybody. Those who this message is for, they get it. And they will act. And one day we'll soon, we will celebrate your testimony. Thank you for joining us today on radio and on Facebook and on TV and in the studio. You, yeah, thank you for joining us in the studio and, um, and we hope you, you have been inspired. We hope you have been inspired as you take this journey with us and take your own adventure to be able to push yourself. We salute you as sponsors, partners, Africel, RC Bank, AYV Media Empire, and Life by Design Limited. We thank you for, for supporting us and being here on the show. Like our Facebook page if, if you haven't done so. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep listening. Keep acting on these things. And one day we will celebrate you having designed your new life. Thank you and God bless you.